Hey guys, so it's uh, Monday, March 13th, 2023, and yeah, I just wanted to uh, do another quick video. So uh, right now I'm just driving out um, to a job site out west of Cochrane, and I got about a 30 minute drive ahead of me, so I was like, why not record a little video here? So yeah, um, today I want to talk about a, a topic that I'm really passionate about, and that's the topic of redefining success so we in North America and I mean largely worldwide we think in a very linear quantitative uh, manner and we don't really take a holistic approach to things a lot of the time so I really want to delve deep into this concept of what truly what integral factors truly define success what quintess quintessential elements um, relate to success. So, yeah, um, first of all, I want to go over some misconceptions. So, I mean, probably the biggest thing when you hear, like, let's say you hear the term successful entrepreneur, or let's say you hear the term, oh, like, the phrase, like, oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's been very successful in life. What do you automatically think? Um, our proclivity and our tendency is to think when we hear that someone's successful is that, oh, yeah, that maybe they're a millionaire, maybe they made a lot of money. And uh, that's, that's a big misconception, because to define success as financial uh, prosperity, there's really a disconnect there, because yes, I believe you can be successful in financial metrics, but that is a very shallow, uh, singular dimension to, of defining success. Success, true success is very multifaceted. So, um, yeah, like, I just, I think of an example here, I think of uh, John Rockefeller, he was one of the um, wealthiest men in American history, and um, I believe he was heavily involved in the oil and gas industry, and he was really one of the pioneers in that industry, and he was a billionaire multi multiple times over. If you translated his value into today's um, currency, he would, uh, if I recall correctly, he would be... Uh, wealthier than like the likes of um, Jeff Bezos, so pretty much richer than the richest man a lot today. But you know what? He had accumulated all this wealth through his life, but at the end of his life, he, in an interview, he told the reporter, they, they asked him, they were like, they just asked him some questions and he didn't seem to be content and they asked him about that and he basically said, he was like, you know, I was more content and I was happier when I was like a young boy, black and at an old factory and man that really puts things into perspective was John Rockefeller successful in to some extent in the terms of finances he was very successful but again that is so shallow and so um, one-dimensional so you know we need a more of a holistic approach to success we need to think about it in more of a critical fashion so I want to make a proposal here. Uh, I don't know if hypothesis is the right term because this isn't a strictly scientific video, but um, I want to say that success, you can define it in so many metrics. You can define it in uh, financial metrics. You can define it in um, spiritual metrics. You can define it in physical metrics as in fitness, and you can define it in relational metrics. And I think the largest greatest metrics to whereby we measure success and this is far more qualitative than quantitative and we kind of seem to uh, we don't gravitate towards qualitative we always gravitate towards quantitative um, that's just how we're wired as human beings we like black and white we don't like subjectivity um, we like objectivity so anyways um, I would say of what I listed there um, it's hard to narrow it down to one but I would say and these kind of are interconnected, but I would say we need to start defining success in relate on upon relational and spiritual metrics. And I'm just going to go into what I mean by that. So I firmly believe that we are here not to serve ourselves. We are here not for, you know... We're not here for instant gratification. So many people live their lives with this constant thirst and desire to just 
get their instant gratification, get what they want, where they want it, exactly when they want it. And um, that is, it, it's not healthy at all. So instead of having this mindset, I, I, I'd like us to think of success in terms of what would people remember you for? What legacy would you leave? Let's say there's an engraver and he, he's tasked with engraving your tombstone. What would he engrave on your tombstone? Would he engrave um, Joe Johnson, whatever his, your name is? Would he engrave, he was a very wealthy man, um, but he used all his wealth selfishly and didn't leave an inheritance for his family and was a greedy Ebenezer Scrooge? Like, is that success? No, I, I think not. I, I truly believe success is defined in relational and spiritual metrics. So I think God has given us the ability to show compassion and to reach out to this world around us. This world is broken if you haven't realized that. It's uh, brutally, brutally um, visible, that reality that our world is broken. And you know, the greatest, I believe a great success in this life would be to impact as many lives as humanly possible. If you die with not even a penny to your name, but you've reached out to hundreds of lives and um, just shown compassion and kindness to these people. I would consider you more successful than than the wealthiest man who has ever lived, who lived his life selfishly. So, yeah, I just, I really think that success needs to be defined in alignment with reason and with purpose. So we need uh, to go to delve into this deep more deeply. We need to go back to the reason and purpose for which we were created. This could be a whole other video, but that's one of the biggest questions in life. Why am I here? What is my purpose? And you know, there's a book that has all the answers and that book is called the Bible. I like, I like how people put it. Uh, they've made the Bible somewhat of an acronym where it stands for basic instructions before leaving earth and that is very true that's pretty much all you need to know in this life um so yeah you know god created us and um i really I, I really think a good encapsulation of our purpose is found in um the westminster catechism the first question and answer it says what is the chief end of man and the answer to that question is the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. So that's the purpose for which we were created. And you know, another good, uh, another good um, verse that I could go to is I've mentioned this in previous videos, but it's in I believe Exodus uh, 20 or 21, where it says, uh, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength." And then Jesus adds in the, uh, the epistles, or sorry, not the epistles, the gospels, he says, and you shall love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. So that is an encapsulation of our purpose on this earth. We are called to love God and to love others. And through our love for God and through our love for others, which will be dem demonstrated and emulated in service to God and service to others, we will demonstrate and we will bring about glory for God. We will exalt his name. Glorification, a uh, good synony synonym for it, is magnification. You know, the way in which you live demonstrates your priorities. And if you live in such a way that you're obsessed with like something, that means it's important to you. And that will often draw other people, people's attention to whatever your obsession is. If you live in a manner in which you're obsessed with God and bringing Him glory, you'll draw others' attention to God and bring Him glory. That's just a simple reality. And yeah, it really speaks a lot about your priorities, what your, what your obsessions are. And you know, that's, there are very few healthy obsessions in this life, but I can genuinely say one obsession you can never, ever, ever go wrong with is the obsession with loving and serving God, because that is literally what you're created to do. So yes, we, we got to align this definition of success with our purpose, our preliminary purpose for which we were created. So success is primarily found I could say exclusively, honestly, exclusively found within the realm of living a life that glorifies God through the means of loving God and loving others.
so yeah, I, I that goes into the spiritual metric. So I just I kind of think of this funny example. Like just imagine, imagine, picture this. Imagine you have this this fish. Um, I don't know. Like let's just say I'm not too familiar with fish. Let's say it's a salmon, and let's say it's a, a deep sea salmon, and he's washed up on a beach. And he's trying to swim in the sand. He's flipping around, flipping his flippers, and he's slowly dehydrating and basically slowly dying. <laughs> so you know, you know the problem there is that fish is not doing what he was created to do. That fish was designed to thrive. He was designed to thrive in the ocean. And the a anatomy of a fish, um, it isn't conducive. It's not um, designed for life on the on shore. So. You know that that analogy that pretty much describes at least 95% of the human population. The vast majority of us, sadly, apart from God's grace, are living in not just not merely in ignorance, but I would go so far as to say we are living in direct opposition to the way in which God created us to live, and that is to glorify Him and love Him. God's name is more commonly used in today's culture as a swear word than as in its proper context for glorifying him and that is just devastating it's terrible it's heartbreaking so yeah you know success is a living a life in which we love god and love others and seek to glorify god so relational and spiritual you know you're never going to have a real purpose until you're reconciled with your creator god and you're never going to know how to truly love others until you're reconciled with god you know, I love listening to Dennis Prager, but there's one thing that I really don't see eye to eye with him on. He, and for those of you who are not familiar with Dennis Prager, I'd really encourage you to look him up. He's an excellent conservative um, speaker from the U.S. Very well known. But yeah, the one thing I don't see eye to eye with him on is his opinion on unconditional love. So he says that love always needs to be conditional. You cannot unconditionally love someone. But that violates God's love to us because God's love is completely unconditional. If God's love was condi conditional, you know what happened to all of us. We would all get a one-way ticket to hell because that's what we deserve. The condition, if God's condition, was God, God's condition is perfection and that perfection cannot be attained. We must cling to Christ. We must run to Him and I would love you. I would, I would highly love it if you watched um part two of my testimony i really go into depth on the gospel and this whole meaning and purpose is you'll never find it until you come to grasp with who you are in light of creator god where you stand before him and how you need to be reconciled to god through his son jesus christ so yeah um unconditional love the only way we can show this love to others is when we ourselves have been shown this love to, from god you know, everyone talks about strings attached. Everybody talks about just various things. Um, you know, whenever someone does something incredibly nice, there it's like instantly you know there's an ulterior motive. And that's almost always true. I do believe. I believe we God created us with traces of His character, which is corrupted. I do believe. On a very rare occasion, perhaps, you can make the argument that an unsafe person who has not experienced God's love could show unconditional love, but that'll be in a very limited, um, to a very limited extent. But once you've experienced God's complete, overwhelmingly incredible forgiveness and salvation and love, then you can truly show that unconditional love to others. So I can, I can bring even greater clarity to our definition of success. It's not merely loving others to get with ulterior motives it's loving others unconditionally as God has loved us and God God basically Jesus Christ basically commends us to um, love one another to the point that we would lay down our life for one another and that is especially within the context of marriage you know I I do not believe as a man if you are not prepared to lay down your life for your wife and I mean literally if a man came into the house um, you'd be the only you, with a, with a gun, you'd be the human shield. You'd literally lay down your life for her. I do not believe if you're contemplating getting married or getting engaged and you're not at that point where you're willing to lay down your wife, your life, sorry, your life, not your wife, lay down your life for your wife, 
or fiance, fiance, future wife. I don't believe you're in the position to get married. And you know, that's something as young men, I, I, I'd love to do some future podcasts direct, let's, directed specifically to young men. Um, I think that's really a good prerequisite to, to marriage. To be fair, I'm unmarried and have few qualifications in that realm, so maybe I shouldn't be talking, but that's just, for myself, I'm not, I'm not, I, that's something I've been very firm with myself on. I, the point at which I consider pursuing marriage, I'm going to be convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that whoever I'm pursuing, I would 100% without hesitation be willing to lay down my life for it. That's essential. Um, anyways, I digress. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, success, primarily spiritual and relational. And the other, there are other subsidiary uh, metrics through which we can define success. And, um, yeah, there are a lot, like, so many details, you know, people talk about quality time over quantity of time, like, especially with your family, there's some truth to that, I believe that life is precious, life is short, um, you know, we always, always think of, like, big moments, like, going on vacation with the family, and just, that's when the special things will happen, that's not when the special things happen, the special things are day to day everyday things that you overlook, you know, the amount of time you spend eating meals with your family, the amount of time you spend um, just doing the day-to-day tasks, that's going to consume the majority of your life, that is where you show, you. that's a, just a prime opportunity to show love and compassion to your family or to your friends or whoever surrounds you in your life, so yeah, just to, the greatest way in which we can love people is to point them to Christ. And I want to, I guess I haven't been very clear, but love, how do you define love? I believe love is a continuous self-sacrificial giving of yourself to others. Literally having this mindset, you don't even think for a second, what can I get? It's always, 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 what can I give? How can I pour out my life for this person? How can I love them? How can I serve them? How can I show them unconditional love? Um, So yeah, love is incredible. It's one of those things that... I hate it, I hate to say it, but our culture is just, it's redefined, it's warped it, it's twisted it, um, typically, like, let's say a guy tells someone, like, oh, that, like, this girl is so hot, I I really love her, man, it's like, what does, 99% of the time, what does he actually mean, he means, he, he could pretty much use the word lust interchangeably with love, he doesn't genuinely love her, and it's a brutal reality, it's, it's devastating, it's sad, but, you know, basically lust is the opposite of love. Lust is just wanting a person for what they can give and what you can take from them, and it's it's disgusting. I anyone who embarks on something like marriage with that as their primary motivation, you're you're in for devastating failure. You need to be giving. You need to be genuinely loving and caring for your spouse. So yeah, love is unconditional. Love and un- <laughs> sorry, love. That's a real reason. Love is unconditional self-sacrifice, giving yourself for others. Um, yeah, and you know, there are so many metrics through which success are commonly defined. Like, I'll just go into financial. So, I believe the success found in finances is not intrinsically found within um, wealth itself. It's found in what you do with that wealth. You can have an Ebenezer Scrooge who, who just stows away all his money in his little his coffers and doesn't donate to charities or do anything valuable with it. You can have a person who lives a hedonistic life and buys all the jewelry, all the just whatever they want. And you know, (laughs) maybe as a caveat to that, just so I I don't seem hypocritical, I do buy some nice things, like the whole watch I'm wearing, it's, it's actually not a it's a kind of cheap watch, to be honest. I got it on, okay, it's a good watch, but I got it on Kijiji for a super good deal. I would never buy it for its face value. So that's just so, you know, I'm not a hypocrite here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really think that success and financial metrics, is it's what you do with the money. It's not how much money you have. Uh, it's not your net worth. So like, let's say we have, there, there are people, I forget the guy's name, but there is this, very well-known Christian entrepreneur in the 1900s who, um, I'm trying to recall, he had some huge heavy equipment operating businesses, 
and basically he wrote a book called God Runs My Business. He donated 99% of his profits to charity and to the, the fur primarily the furthering of the gospel across the world. 1% went into his pocket. That is financial success. It's about how how you benefit this world. You know, when we enter this world, so often we have this attitude of just, what can I get, what can I get, what can I get? Don't have that attitude, have a giving attitude. Ask yourself, how can I make this world a better place? How do you define better? Better is bringing this world into closer alignment with how God created it to be. Pointing souls to Christ. Um, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Fulfilling the dominion mandate God's given us. Cultivating this earth. Bringing good out of it. I mean, whatever your job, I, I do believe there are honest, successful jobs that are valuable. I, I think a lot of the jobs we have nowadays, it, it's really sad, but you see, um, I don't know if you're, on, if you're on Facebook that often, but on Facebook, all these videos always pop up about self-made millionaires, and it's really sad, but like, you come across all these videos of people who especially women who've made millions off like OnlyFans accounts. That is not a successful career. She's not successful. That is that is a terrible thing. And um, winning the lottery, OnlyFans, all these like, uh, they're not all deceptive, but just immoral ways of getting wealth. I don't believe you're successful if that's how you attain your wealth. But I believe that uh, the proper successful way is to live and work in the way God designed us to work. There are not so many natural resources in this world. I believe there are sufficient natural resources that no one on this planet should be living in poverty. There are sufficient, nat sufficient natural resources that everyone, if not highly wealthy, everyone should live very comfortably. Um, and we just got to figure out a way how to um, organize and administrate and just find smarter best practices in which everyone in this world can get clean water everyone can get their basic needs and this world has more than enough natural resources to provide for everyone and much much more so yeah i believe that a successful work is just um basically the, using the natural resources god has given us and using those for good in productive manners and that there's so many aspects of that whether it's I mean, for myself, I guess specifically, I consider as a general contractor, I use natural um, resources such as wood and concrete to erect structures, and I basically use um, goods in their in their natural primitive forms, and I cut them, I refine them to build beautiful homes. And there are other resources. Uh, there's the resource of the mind. There's the resource of intellect. This is the most powerful tool you'll ever have. Um, I believe. You could uh, glorify your body. You could work out endlessly. And if you have not developed your mind and your intellect and your cognitive abilities, it really is a waste. Um, you, there's so much you can do with your mind. There's so much good. Um, so, yeah, you know, I just I want to wrap things up and just kind of summarize it. Thankfully, this is a slightly shorter video than my previous ones. But, yeah, success is not defined in quantitative metrics it's defined in the qualitative metrics of loving and serving others loving others self-sacrificially and primarily loving God and you will never be truly successful in this life until you come to a saving knowledge of your creator God through his son Jesus Christ so I just want to leave you with that um, and I want to encourage you everything you do in life do with vigor do with passion and do it with purpose do it with a purpose not merely of being successful for the sake of being successful, but being successful in terms of loving and caring for others. If you do attain great wealth as an entrepreneur or whatever you pursue, use that wealth for good. Use that love to serve and love others. So yeah, God bless you all and I hope you enjoyed this video.